tough but fair. All right. Well, now, now that we're uh, n- now that we, I, I, I'd say at this point we're pretty lubed up. Um, let's uh, let's start the uh, the formal YouTube intro. <laughs> Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. Thank you for watching this exclusive interview on YouTube with one of the most popular rappers on this platform. We have rapper, singer, producer, songwriter, Quideca today with us. Hello everybody. For a full interview slash conversation. Uh, How are you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for having me. The first question I wanted to ask you was, uh, you are now at this point in your music quest. You've reached this point. This interview is the latest sort of arrival point. It's the checkpoint. It's the save spot in your music quest. This is what it's all been leading to. Well, I'm I'm sure it's leading to other things past this point. I hope this is not like the the end of it. This is obviously not the end. But I want to know what it feels like to be at this point, this, this progression point? That's a good question. I don't know. It feels like, na- like now I, I have opened up like the world for me to go in a, in a million different directions because I think a lot before, you know, dropping this recent project, I was definitely being pigeonholed in the like YouTube rapper White guy raps fast, top 10 fastest quad echo rap verses, you know, Mm. but now I've like, you know, created and and I mean that I'd always been sort of creating songs and stuff that was definitely out of that niche. But now I think for sure, like within the wider music community, I think people have been, you know, validating my artistic aspirations more. And seeing, oh, you know, this is actually a cool song that's unique or that's, you know, I don't know. I think I think a lot of people are like opening their minds to what I what I can make, which is cool. And then that sort of opens up the crossroads for, you know, where where I want to go next. Um, I still am kind of always in this in this balance between deciding whether to like play this Internet game of because I've lived my whole life being a a content internet guy ever since I was 10 years old. So I I feel like I have a physical addictive dependency on this, you know, dopamine loop of, you know, feeding into the internet. (laughs) That's the Bo Burnham special. In other words, just hitting quite, quite profoundly, but, um, but I, I, another part of me so part of me wants to just do that and like you know drop banger videos and stuff like that and then the other part of me wants to move to a shack in norway and just work on some weird dope music that is probably going to be more fulfilling so i'm kind of thinking maybe the norway i don't know but so i guess that's the answer to the question yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you you did answer this uh, question. I want to ask you a little bit there, but just to like really kind of um, hone in on it, uh, you know, talking about uh, doing content like 10 fastest rap verses, like that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly you have the talent to pull that sort of thing off. And there is still to this day, like definitely an audience for that sort of thing. Like why, why, why give it up or at least like not fully turn your back on it, but sort of like, you know, maybe turn more parallel to it and also focus on other things. Um, I just felt like that was just punching under my weight so heavily you know like like it was just it was just I felt kind of kind of like there's so much more that I could be doing like and and I I felt a lot of imposter syndrome for having my platform and like not trying to push the boundaries of anything or I I mean it's kind of pushing the boundaries in some way and I'll give credit to my younger self because a lot of that stuff that I was making you know I was like 15 to 17 to 18 and I was just you know growing and trying to figure out who I was as an artist so I wasn't consciously being like oh I'm gonna do this because you know people are gonna like this the most I just sort of grew and and realized you know what this isn't the ceiling that I that I can be at or that I want to stay at and you know what's the point in continuing to do that if I feel like I can evolve you know I've always been a fan of artists that like go from bad to good or that evolve 
insanely like Childish Gambino, for example, is somebody who like if you listen to the 2009 Childish Gambino songs, they're very YouTube rapper, like sort of cringy esque. And like I've always really admired his transition of always being authentic and, you know, but but also trying to be, you know, super ambitious and create crazy shit. Um, and so I guess that's that's what I want to do. I sort of felt like I had a responsibility to do that and you know push my audience out of their comfort zone a little bit mm. yeah no it's, yeah. it's interesting that you say and sort of portray reaching a certain point with that sound and with that style is like punching under your weight because from the perception of some people that's like the greatest thing that you could do there are some people who are <laughs> making exactly that kind of music who are under the impression that they're saving hip-hop or that mm. you know making that kind of music will save hip-hop so for you personally like what kind of planted the seed and caused you to kind of change your mind? Was it kind of slowly becoming more unfulfilled with the process of kind of just continuing down that road? Was it hearing another piece of music or another artist or kind of getting a perception of something else or the perception of yourself changing? Yeah. Um, I've always been uh, like, since I was a kid, I was a musician and I would play songs on the piano and sing them like sort of in an Adele, like Regina Spector type thing, you know, I would and love that, to hear that. I would love to. Hell yeah. This is, this, this is probably the, 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 the most, uh, funny and tongue in cheek I'll be during this interview, but I would die to hear that. I would die to hear I'll send you, it do, to you. I, I would die to hear you do a Regina Spector song. Hell yeah. Um, I'll send you, I, I was doing like original compositions, but that, that was like kind of what they're in the vein yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was actually the first YouTube content I was ever making was like me being 10 years old, doing these sort of piano ballad, you know, songs. And so I've always been a big fan of weird chord progressions. And I kind of had this musical elitist phase as a kid where I was, you know, sort of a precocious, pretentious kid where I would be, be like, if any song has a chord progression that I already know, then it's not, then it's boring and it's, uh, and it's non, and not innovative, which probably also lended itself to me be, becoming a fan of lyrical hip hop and stuff like that. You know, anything that was kind of, uh, you know, allowed to, to or anything that was sort of portrayed as greater or, or holier than, you know, other stuff was what I was a big fan of. So I've always had, but I've always had a, a lot of musical love in a lot of different genres. And I think I just sort of diversified um, in the past few years, what I've been listening to and what I've enjoyed. And I sort of had a conscious, I, you know, listening of when, when I'm listening, Oh, wh why do I like this? What kind of samples am I gravitating towards? And, you know, I've, I started listening to a lot more weird shit, a lot more experimental stuff. Like I became super, uh, in love with bossa nova music uh stuff you know like clarence clarity that uh know now album love like just, just stuff. hell yeah um just a bunch of stuff uh, i i started listening to a bunch of drain gang shit um i just really like like realized if my if i'm gonna be a musician it, I, it's almost my job to listen to as many as much shit as possible and see where i'm getting influenced from because mm. how and i don't know I, don't, I feel like i may have completely went out on a ramble and forgot what the question originally was but did that answer some of it i just listened yeah, no, to i i I, I, I think you, i yeah. think you answered it and then also kind of like you know moseyed into uh almost what i wanted to ask you next to kind of link off of that you know changing your sound changing your perception narrative and um you know how does this kind of manifest itself into the sonic evolution that we hear from voice memos to this new record because like you know regardless of how you feel about each album um the change in sound and style that you've undergone between both these records is kind of like revolutionary you know especially on like the production side where you know there's so much more reverb and distortions and weird textures and ambitious almost like prog uh you know esque like changes and passages and there are parts of it that are kind of conceptual too um whereas yeah. like voice memos uh in many respects you know for better or for worse is a pretty cut and dry project uh this like really kind of puts the listener into the weeds thematically emotionally and i guess uh uh you know you went there without even really like a practice shot 
you know, yeah. you, you just like went in there 110%. And I guess like, you know, at, at what point did you decide that this is the change that you needed to make? And like, what was your first, I guess, step toward doing it? Because you really needed to like undertake like some incredible production duties to, you know, make this record happen in the way that, that, that you did. Yeah. I just wanted to say, say thank you for, for acknowledging that because that validates a lot of, uh, grueling hours and, um, no, it sounds yeah, like I you think, put a lot of hours into it. Yeah. 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 Um, on voice memos, some of the, I, I had some inklings of, of that, like, uh, on the song, a dream I can't remember, which is like a little interlude that had sort of the, the, for me to you style, big bass drop with reverb and melodies. And, and I, and I started to notice that on those tracks where I was kind of experimenting but not in the in the way that you would deem experimental but in a way that maybe my audience at the time would deem experimental i noticed that those became the cult favorite songs and that's what just felt most original and interesting to me and so i i wanted to approach that more and and just the i i really wanted to become much better of a producer and i you know, just started working in the in in the studio and getting these new plugins and just really going down a pro, a production rabbit hole. Mm. And I started to make little, you know, ambient soundscapes and ideas. And they just became. I, I was like, oh my god, I'm actually creating something that's I feel like I haven't heard before, mm. and that's cool. And so I just kept going and I kept going, and I realized I, I also wanted to make something that was more transportative. That was like more of an experience. Like when you're listening to the album, you, you almost feel like you're there or, it, or it takes you to a new place. And it, and it just, everything sounded super cold and wintry and epic. And so it just really sound like the way that the album sounded was like, you know, standing at the top of a, of a snowy mountain and just yelling into an abyss. And that basically became the, sonic inspiration that I was trying to base all of these different sound, uh, all these different songs off of. So like, even, even though it, the styles on, on the album vary a lot, like there's some more rap, you know, aggressive ones. There's some more ambient, uh, interlude-ish, uh, re reverbial songs. There's some, you know, uh, stuff that has a bunch of different electronic elements. They all kind of link back to that aesthetic and, I, so, so I, I, yeah, it just became a super ambitious, like thing in my mind that I, that I wanted to carry out and it took, it was not easy and it, and I kind of fucked up because it took much longer than I wanted it to. I, I was basically originally going to drop the album a year before it ended up coming out. And <laughs> I just kept making things and realizing that I could do better. Every new song that I made, I was like, oh, fuck. I need to go fix the mix on that. And that was trash. And now I need to do that. So it became the cycle. And then the more I worked on it, the more I felt guilty for having worked on it for so much. And, and it built the anxiety and the pressure to make it better and better, mm -hmm. which then just made it very hard to let go. And so I ended up working on the same songs over the course of many, many months. And ironically, the album became a, a, an extremely meta experience where it was all like thematically you know it was a lot about mental health and growth and introspection and you know getting over hurdles and then making the album be basically consumed the whole pandemic era of my life and like that became the that became like the mountain in and of itself so it was a very like weird uh thing but i felt like i learned a lot and now i've like gone through my my you know bruce lee training arc and now i'm ready to fucking make some make some other shit without having to gruelingly learn how to do everything again you know i mean considering everything that you just said and how large this project is as well like how did you know when you were done you know did you eventually reach a point where you're just like my, i gotta give my audience something or was it or were you just like satisfied at one point that's a great question. And I don't always know the answer because one of the biggest things that I had trouble with is just like letting it go. Like even when I turned the album in, I, I, my manager, I drove him fucking insane because I would be like, the album's done. It's done this week. And then I 
And then as soon as I would give it over, I'd be like, ah, but I want to tweak this and I want to tweak this. So it was just so, so much of a grind to, to let it go. And even when I did uh, turn in the album, I was still like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to end up fixing the mixes. I'm going to life of Pablo and I'm going to fix the mixes. So, so I really had a big <laughs> issue with letting this shit go, but it was, it was, I, I would do these things and I was getting to the f- end phase of making it where I would, you know, have the whole thing. I would go in the car and play the album th- through all at once. And then, you know, write down every single issue I, I would have until I basically had no more issues and I played it. And then I was like, Oh, this actually felt, this sounded really cool at the end of it. Like at the end of it, it felt good. Like I, I felt, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it was something that came much easier in voice memos. And because I was so much more self-critical and anxious and whatever in the, in the last one where I ended up playing all the songs, you know, like when you, when you say a word so much and it doesn't sound like a word anymore, that's what I ended up doing to the songs. But eventually I did a, I did a full listen to it in a cup and, and then it just sounded right. And then that was basically, that was basically what it was uh, after basically doing that for, you know, four months. So, mm. yeah. Um, that's sorry. That's just a lot. Um, sorry, I'm kind of I'm a rambler. I apologize. Oh no, it's it's just it's just a I'm I'm just a you know amazed at just sort of like what you put yourself through to uh, uh to put this record out. But um, you, you know, let's start going through. I guess what you were talking about, like some of the personal struggles and themes of the album, a little bit. Uh, one thing when listening back to the album that struck me. Uh, that you know could dig into some interesting ideas and feelings was um with a smiling at the ground uh yeah. where you know on that track you rap a lot about uh public perception your own self perception and so on and so forth and i guess uh you know what i want to know from you personally is like as of right now like what is your perception of yourself and what the how, fuck yeah yeah <laughs> like well i mean you know you you rap about it with such passion i figure you must have some idea of 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 that like who you are and what you represent and uh you know what you are as an artist and you know if if you can't sort of answer that clearly i guess maybe uh, an easier way to go about it is to to say you know your perception of yourself how do you feel like you know considering this is kind of like almost the the battle of that song how do you feel like your perception of yourself differs from the way others generally like perceive you that's a very tough question. That's a question I ask myself every day in the mirror, mm. but I can't, uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't found myself yet, Anthony, but um, the, uh, it, do, it doesn't need to get that existential. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get that existential. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have been thinking about the perception of myself, especially in the relationship to like, in relationship to how I've become so attached to the internet and the way that people perceive me ends up becoming a reflection of, of how I perceive myself. And that's probably bad. I mean, it's not probably, it's definitely bad because, you know, I, I, I think I tie so much of my life in general to just working on music and, and my content that it's, I, I think I've set myself up for a dangerous game where the, I, that, that's, that is how I, like, sometimes I have trouble, you know, distinguishing my life from that, you know? And mm. so I think, uh, as an, as an artist, I, I guess I perceive myself as, um, uh, as somebody that has, has good intentions and a lot of ambition and, a uh, belief that like, like I, I genuinely believe that I can, make really cool shit and i and i think i am just sort of getting started with you know at a phase where where i i think i have like enough self-awareness and tastes now to start really like going ham and and you know not not feeling uh imposter syndrome or like i you know i i and, and stuff like that like i now feel sort of worthy to be the artists that I, that I, you know, want to be, and I still have a lot of room to grow and whatnot. Um, the, in terms of people's perception of me, I feel like the internet has such a very, like weirdly varied perception of me. Mm. That really just depends on, you know, what layer of the iceberg you've, you've, you know, watched me or, and stopped. Like, 
uh, every day I'll see people on hip hop Twitter or whatever the fuck, you know, one person has watched the like gimmicky YouTube raps and that's me to them is the gimmicky YouTube raps. And the other person has listened to, you know, Sisyphus and, and from me to you and they're arguing and one person's like, he's a corny white trash guy and the other guy's like no he's actually has potential and he's doing something kind of cool and they're both right you know like they're both right because i've i've given out so much of my my you know growth as just like a kid to an adult like my whole growth as an artist and a creator since basically the age of being a conscious human being you know past the age of 10 has been publicly documented and so it's definitely kind of a weird uh, thing where where I definitely uh, buy into people's perception of me, and I and I take that into account when I don't know working on stuff. And a lot of times people are right. Like I don't I don't invalidate everything that people say. Like a lot of people do have good um, takes. Like not not to equate you to a random uh, asshole on hip hop Twitter. But for example, like when you, when you did your mini review of voice memos, because you're somebody that I, that I respect as a critic and I value your perception, what you said was something that I kept in my mind of like, you're, you know, that's, that's something I'm going to think about when I'm working on something later you know not that i'm just gonna make what i'm making to you make anthony fantano give me a light seven but like you know to, but but not invalidating everything that people say and taking it hopefully with like a healthy grain of salt but also a idea of like they're not just saying that for the sake of saying it you know i don't know yeah i'm i you know i i would like to apologize for you know ever having gotten in your head or anything it's not it's not my no, intention. you don't need to apologize this is your, your job as a critic like this is why it's important not to uh you know hype you hype you up too much here but i think that 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 is what you know what your job is and if and if you weren't if you just came out and said this is such a great album he gave it a real good try like that you're not you're not being authentic and you're not like gonna end up uh, you know, insp- like, cause, cause even though it's, it's criticism, it, it's actually inspiring because it's like, you know, I, I want to, I want to do better now. I think especially in the YouTube scene, a lot of, and, and just listening to your audience, a lot of times your audience can be very accepting of whatever you put out, you know, and they'll just, if, if it sort of aligns with their previous perception of why they like you, mm. then they're going to be like, okay, that's cool. Keep doing that. You know? So I think, so yeah, I've definitely, am, you don't need to apologize for having like a reasonable critique, you know? Um, yeah, I think that that probably overall makes art better, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I, I feel like the one, uh, if, if there's one thing about what I do, I don't know if I could change it. I mean, I, I, I uh, you know, enjoy that people get a lot out of what I do and I enjoy that, you know, I can, if I really enjoy something, you know, shout it out and get attention on it and so on and so forth. But, you know, sometimes I, I do hear artists every once in a while, like, oh man, you know, I'll, I'll make a song and I'll be thinking, what's Fantano going to think about this? Or is yeah. Anthony Fantano going to hate this? And it's like, oh God, I, I don't want anyone ever thinking that, you know, it's like, it's like the last, you know, I don't want to be like a barrier to anybody's creativity, but I guess simultaneously, if, if, if some bald headed melon wasn't in your ear, like convincing you that what you're doing is not good, it would be somebody else to would be some motherfucker on Twitter just being like, oh, I can't believe that motherfucker said that uh, I'm shit or something, you know, but, yeah, but yeah. I, I, and I think- at least you're genuine in what you say, like at least you're genuine and you like are holding people to, I always perceived it as like, you're just holding people to a higher standard, you know? Yeah. I mean, ultimately I want everyone to do better. You know, yeah. it's like, I mean, it's it, even, even the artists who I've given the most negative reviews, would I, would I like to wake up one fucking day and then they just like come out with some record that blows my mind? Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, personally get joy out of one artist disappointing me over and over and over, <laughs> you know, except Nav, um, except Nav. Well, I mean, I, I listen, I would love a good Nav album. I would love a Nav, <laughs> like if Nav made an album that blew me the fuck away, I would love it. I would love it. I would be a. I would be amazed. I would be so happy and I would get on camera with a smile on my fucking face and I just like 
just give that album the sloppiest fucking blowjob for track after track after track. <laughs> and I just talk about how great Nav is and how it's amazing that he's like turned a new leaf and everything and how I'm really enjoying his music now. Like I, I would have endless praise for a Nav record if, you know, he went even from like to a seven to ten. Like mm. if, if even if even came out with like a, an album that to me was like a seven out of ten, I would just fucking I'd put that thing on the love list just out of principle. I'd, I'd just oh, be like, well, that 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 would have to be on my favorites of the year. Just be just uh, just because of the surprise factor, just because of the surprise factor. Nav, <laughs> you heard that you heard it here. You heard it right here. All right. And and just to reiterate, I mean, the the Nav interview invite is still open. We would love to talk with Nav over here. I would have nothing against talking to Nav. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> oh god. Um, but uh, uh, diving a little further into uh, uh, the, some of the uh, tracks on the record, um, uh, you know, I, I also kind of get this perception off of numerous songs that uh, uh, at this point you still feel like a bit of a, I guess in a way, like a lone wolf. Um, do you feel like at this point, is that by choice? Is that something you'd like to change at some point? Do you want to be like the odd man out in the youtube music sphere or would you like to reach a point where f things feel like more connected and collaborative and you know may maybe someday you're not the one uh aching over all of your mixes and somebody's kind of like maybe taking the mental anguish of that off of your plate a little bit so that yeah. uh, you, you don't psych yourself out with like 10 mixes that you're getting ear fatigue on or something and, and I, wish yeah. I wish it was just 10 i wish it was just ten. yeah probably more than that yeah um no yeah i um, I see myself more as a masked wolf. Mm -hmm. um, a masked wolf, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'm an yeah. astronaut in the ocean. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I'm not like a, like a, fuck all these other rappers. I'm in my own lane and, and I'm doing my own thing and I'm like, you know, and I'm, I produce it and I'm mixing it and whatever. I really wish I didn't. Like, I, I've, you know, it's a point of pride and, and it's cool to have something where you've like really been in the weeds with every element of like, the song and the writing and the instrumentation and the video and all that shit, that's cool. And then people can say, oh, he did it himself, you know, like a, like on, on my Russ shit. But it sucks. I don't want to, I, I, like, like it, it can get to a point where it's just very, uh, you just get in your own head, which clearly I've, I've <laughs> articulated in this interview that is that's something that I do. Um, and, I, and I would love to collaborate with people. Like uh, I've been working on uh, just basically building up an instrumental portfolio that I'm going to send out to some artists. And like, I would, I would love to also just sort of sit back and, and work on the production side mm. um, for people because yeah, I, 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 I've like made so, so much shit where it's little ideas that I, you know, never fully f fleshed out. And I don't know. I, I, I think that that's, that's sort of a little, a little arc, a little path that I, that I want to go down. So yeah, I'm always open to, to collaborating people with people. And I, and I think it's fun. I like it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, talking about, um, almost like the feeling of being consumed in your content and your process and, and everything, um, in, in the way that you are, I mean, maybe this is something that you're still kind of battling with at this point, but you know, what are the things that you do or indulge in to kind of get your head out of that space to give yourself a reset or some perspective or just kind of give yourself a break from that world when you need it? Yeah, uh, like hanging out with, you know, f friends, family, all that stuff, going outside, um, you know, playing uh, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, um, you know, I don't know, just shit, shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I probably should should do do better. <laughs> I should do better. Thank you for thank you for encouraging me, encouraging the self care. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I know I, for I you, for you, what the fuck, dude? Because yeah, you're, don't ask, you're not don't even. Ask, don't ask me about my self care routine. Yeah, because I mean, that. all these questions that you're asking me, I've wanted to counter them, like in terms of, in terms of your perception of of what you're doing, and and you you know you've been basically upload. I feel like you've been uploading every day for the past ten years. It feels like um, you know. Yeah, again, my 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 self care routine is uh, is is uh, uh, not to be scrutinized during this uh, during this interview. It's uh, <laughs> I should go vegan. I think I think I need to go vegan. <laughs> you know, I think. Uh, I think uh, being vegan 
and uh, I, I suppose like uh, working out, got in a workout yeah. today. Um, and then the rest of my day was insane and shitty and terrible. And <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you and coming in here to have a conversation with you is is one of the most pleasant things of my day. Oh, so that's so nice. I appreciate you. Wow. Be, being a bit of a buffer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate this is this is the highlight of my day, too. Before you go to the next question, can I can I bring up an anecdote that I've been waiting to get off my chest for for many years? Uh, you are invited to do so. Yes. All right. OK, so I'm not sure if you remember this. But in 2016, I th yeah, I think 2016, you know, I was, I've, I've, I've been a big Anthony Fantano stan. You know, I've been. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that in a few moments, yeah, too. I've been co opting my opinions from, from your reviews for. Yeah, you've since, been stealing since my opinions. Time yeah. began. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Or in school, I've just memorized your review. I've taken the take as my own. But um, so I remember there's this uh, uh, photo view that was, you know, it's, the, you know, the photo. It's you with the mohawk. Mm. Uh, a young, a young, young melon. Yeah. And someone had photoshopped a Hobson shirt, like a Hobson merch onto your shirt. Yeah. And then I thought that was very funny. And so what I did was I took that, I photoshopped that into a yearbook mm. photo oh, okay. of, you, of you wearing the Hobson shirt. Oh, you, so you did that Photoshop? Photo. And then, and then I put the, the senior quote, I put a senior quote that said, did the man who invented college go to college? Hmm. Okay. Then. And it's and it's a great meme. And then I put it in a Snapchat and then did like a little Snapchat caption that was like, yo, look at what I just found in my in my older brother's yearbook to mm. make it believable enough. Yeah. And then you reposted it. It got it, it got put on world, the world star Instagram for whatever reason, like back when that was actually mattered. And it yeah. got hundreds of thousands of likes. It was like my one of my biggest contributions to the internet yeah. of all time for my many <laughs> years being on the internet was making this Anthony Fantano Hobson meme. So I was wondering if you, first of all, remember the meme or, and yeah, I, you, I shared it on my story. Twitter. I shared it on my Twitter. Yeah. 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 No, I remember you that one. know that that was me that made that. I didn't, re I didn't remember or recall that that was, you No, I think that somebody like passed <laughs> me that meme in a DM and then I was like, yeah. Oh, this is funny. And like, nobody told me the source of, of that meme at all ever. <laughs> So I needed to I needed to get that off off my chest because I thank you. I, yeah, 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 it's come full circle now. No, thank know? thank thank you for contributing to my memedom. I think that's like the most valuable thing that anybody can do. Um, yeah, honestly, like if any if 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 you've got some free time and you care about anything that I do, don't 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 message me. Don't reach out to me. Don't argue with strangers about my internet uh, you know opinions online. Make a meme. Yeah. Make a meme. Make a good meme. And that's that's all 100%. I can. That's all I can recommend. And then and then maybe one day you'll be Quideca. With one a, can only hope with an Anthony Fantano meme on the World Star Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I did want to ask you about uh uh you know you you watching my reviews and enjoying my opinions and so on and so forth and and being a bit of a, a rap critic in a way yourself, um because recently you did a video talking about the new J Cole project, and uh you know you listened through. You had some thoughts on it, but then at one point in your in your observations, you threw out uh, a guess as to what I would think about it and what my review and what my score would be. And you were pretty much like right on the money with it. And I want to know, like, like what what is it about my head that you feel like you understand that I would like that, you know, that I'm going to give a J. Cole project to seven? Like, because because so, like there, there are a lot of there are hundreds of people online who will guess any score on any project. And some of them are right, obviously, but like you gave reasoning, you know, you had like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had like, you know, uh, ideas to back up your guess. So I, yes. I guess I just want to know, like in your, in your mind, where do those come from? Like, you know, what is your understanding of me as kind of a, a music enjoyer that made you feel confident in, in that guess? Um, so I will, I will get to that, but I, so, so I've done one album reaction and that was the J Cole one yeah. at, at that point. And I guessed a light to decent seven, very yeah. specific. And you gave it a light to decent seven. Then I've done, only done one other one, which I did the tire, the creator, <laughs> I did the tire, the creator album reaction to the one that he, you know, just came out. And I, and I predicted that you would give it a light eight. So I was, you gave it a light to decent eight. Yeah. So I, Close and enough. I guess light eight. So Close I, enough. but I, Still on the money. I think that's still two for two. Yeah, you're two for um, two right now. Yeah, I'm two for two. 
uh i don't know why I, I feel like uh your scale like your scale is very ingrained in my in my head mm. and um i don't know i think i know you well i, th- I knew that you're gonna give my album a five i did i did uh-huh. i knew it in my heart but i was hoping i was like he's either gonna give it a five or a seven like if i get lucky if it really clicks it's gonna be a seven but it's probably gonna be a five but and I, I, I think I said that in my uh, reaction to Sisyphus. I was like, I know he really likes Sisyphus, but I think it's going to be a five. <laughs> Maybe I didn't include that in the final cut. But uh, I know, I, I, don't, I don't know how I know, but I just, I, it's just a feeling. It's probably how you, people ask you, how do you rate your albums? You, and, and th- people have asked you this since the dawn of mankind, mm. right? And you're just like, I don't know, it's just, I like it. You know, like everybody's always trying to sway you and is always trying to be like, well, if you gave that of that, then you couldn't give that of that because whatever, you know. Yeah. And so I don't know. I think I've just watched enough of your videos and like cross reference that with like m- my enjoyment of albums where I, f- I think I kind of I kind of got a little bit kind of in your head a little bit. Hmm. No, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess like. You know, I, I guess I wanted to hear from your own mouth, like what that understanding might be if you could have put it into words, because honestly, at this point, like I'm surprised that there aren't more people out there that feel like they know what I wouldn't wouldn't like. I, I feel like personally, I, I, I after years of reviewing things and uh, making it quite obvious the types of things that I enjoy and the types of things that I don't. Um, I mean, I, I know that there are surprises every once in a while. I mean, I guess I, even myself, uh, enjoyed the Olivia Rodrigo more than I thought I, I actually would. Uh, but still yeah. having said that, you know, even thinking about like this most recent week where there were so many people just like with bated breath, like, what is he going to give the Tyler? Uh, he's going to give this album a fucking four. He's going to yeah. hate the Tyler. He's going to give the Tyler a six. He's going to shit all over the Tyler. I'm going to be so heartbroken when he shits on Tyler the creator and it's like i i reacted to it on twitch like it's a very solid record like i feel like this one to anybody who's on the outside who's watched me for even a year i feel like this should be in the bag you know you've seen me praise the fuck out of his last two records and maybe you've seen me like tear apart certain aspects of his older records that aren't carrying over onto this one i thought like it would be pretty obvious that i was going to enjoy it but it seems like there's still so much confusion about like what what is he going to give it what is he going to enjoy what is he not going to enjoy i have a i have a i have a a theory on this yeah i think you some i mean you probably do know your your influence but people really value your opinion in an insane way like people it's it when people say oh he's going to give it a fucking three they don't actually think you're going to give it a three it's it's a defense mechanism (laughs) it's a defense mechanism so that when or if you somehow give it a three Mm. it's like well we knew it like we didn't change our opinion before fantano came out like everybody in their relationship with their opinions like (laughs) as soon as the fantano review gets thrown in no like you you it's like actually kind of uh, incredible the impact that you have on people's like uh, maybe not on on how they hear the music but how they articulate what they like or don't like about it or what they think is like the correct take, you know? And so I think that people really do care about your score. And I, and I think people get too mad at you because you're like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, I'm just the reviewer, you know? And I, and I tell people I, every, like, I feel like you tell people every month at, or week, at least like chill the fuck out. It's just my opinion. You can still enjoy it. Like the amount of times where you said that, is, is pretty, a pretty insane amount of times, but it's just, you know, you, you have that, you have that influence. Um, yeah, to, but, to, yeah. To the degree that I observe that, um, you know, there's definitely some people out there who I feel like will throw numbers out there because in a way, like <laughs> they see flaws in the album as well. And maybe they think it's like even worse than I think it is, you know? Yeah. So it's like there it's, it, as you were kind of saying, almost like in a defensive way, they'll like guess or kind of predict a lower score because like they, they don't want to like, you know, I guess admit the issues that they themselves may have with the mm. record. But um, my fan base was doing the same thing before your review. Like mm. they were, 
oh, don't get your hopes up. He like hated this and and it's going to be a three. Like, don't be like you. Very, you have a big emotional impact on, on a lot of people. I think, well, I mean, your... c- considering the people being mad and I know that we already like addressed the, the my review of your record. But, you know, yeah. given the review is not the most glowing review in the world. Why? Why aren't you mad? Why are you not angry? Um, because I think you you ex- you articulated yourself well. Well, and well you, not not, and not I, even that, but like personally, I'll tell you like, why. I'll tell you why. You know, per- personally, it, have you reached a point where it, w- was there a time where that that sort of thing would get to you, or like does the does that thing not get to you these days? Um, it definitely can get to me. The reason yours doesn't get the the recent uh, for me to you review hmm. is because I I felt like you were rooting for me above all. Like like you know what I'm saying? Like like. It, you know, it got a five or whatever, which is like a when you when you just look at the the score, it's like okay, that's okay, you know. But I, but in the way that you articulated your points and the expectations that I had for like, you know, considering your previous uh, reviews on, on my stuff, it felt like you you weren't you're not just you're you know you're you're not a hater like like you're rooting for the music to be good and you want to like it, you know, and so. And and you explain what you like about it and what you don't. So how how can I be upset about that? Like I'm more upset about people who may just be like, fuck this guy, like people who don't give me a give me a chance. But you gave me the impression that you that you appreciated some things that I that I was doing and that you would give me a chance in the future, which is really all, all I all I care about, I think. You know? Would, would I like the score better? Yes. Would, would, would you <laughs> feel any differently if like you know, it was a pitchfork review 4.2 and was just like, you know, saying you were cringe. Yeah, and that is what pitchfork would say. You know, that's true. You know, they would do the review. They'd say they would do some sort of snarky. Intro I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if they would use such pedestrian language, but it would definitely be no, insinuated. No, would it say, would be insinuated. He's a he imit, his most famous videos is imitating rappers. And this is no other. It would be some shit like that. But um <laughs> No, yeah, maybe you know. Honestly, I'm I'm probably just talking out of my ass because I want to because I want to seem like nice and fucking uh, self aware. But now, nah, if you give that, if you give my album like a three, I would I would probably be sad. Like I would be sad. But not saying that you can't. I'm not. You know, I'm gonna take it back because I don't want to. I don't want to influence your your reviews of me by being like. I, but if my I I feel like I hopefully am at a point where I wouldn't release an album that is a three. But. Um, I don't know. Like, like that, that would you probably dare. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. But but that would probably get to get to me as like, oh, fuck, dude, I got a three, you know, but I don't know. You've given some albums that I like a three. Mm. So maybe I would maybe I would justify it to myself and be able to, to live another day. Sure. No, it's true. Sometimes yeah. sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I get it wrong. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yes. Ask me ask me a question. And then I actually want to throw a few of your your fan questions at you before we we head out because I I got your your fans are pretty passionate over here they threw a bunch at oh, me hell so yeah. I want I want to go through some of those um I remember in your old videos uh maybe not old old videos but sort of through like 2018 to 2019 you you okay. had this reoccurring narrative of like we've reached peak trap yeah do you and I feel like I haven't heard you mention that recently like what what how do how do you stand on the on the idea of peak trap do you think that it's evolved or or what what do you think um i think it's kind of hard to sell me on the idea that like trap music aesthetically and uh creatively has it like evolved significantly since like 2019 you know what mm. i mean like i still believe that there is such a thing as peak trap because there's sort of like a peak of popularity for everything you know what i mean um yeah so it's like, you know, the popularity of nothing lasts forever, you know, like trap music isn't just going to last into eternity. But, um, you know, I, I think right now we're just like continuing to see the mainstream saturation of it um, as well as uh, as hip hop. And, you know, honestly, like I think the most revolutionary thing to happen to the sound, um, you know, aesthetically, the last thing has been, you know, just kind of like the psychedelic undertones that it's been kind of undertaking and and still, you know. Um, hang on as of late, I think, uh, you know, we may see some more push forward and more evolution on it, uh, when Travis Scott drops his new record, 
you know Ooh. what I mean? Like oh, when yeah, Utopia yeah. comes out, we may hear, uh, you know, some new, uh, sounds and ideas out of it. Um, but as far as like, you know, uh, hip hop's mainstream, uh, I, I guess like, you know, uh, sound crafters and I guess like, you know, uh, evolutionists, uh, uh, if, if you can call it that way. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I don't know what the hell Kanye is doing. You know, I, I think Kanye is just kind of like in his own weird hermitive Christian world right now. Uh, who the hell knows when Kendrick's going to drop? When Kendrick drops, yeah. I mean, that's that's for sure probably going to guide the sound of some things. Um, yeah. You know, Drake uh, doesn't so much rock the boat as much as he just kind of like formulates very easy to hop on trends and chases, you know, very easy to hop on trends. Um, you know, I, I feel like we've reached a point where the people of the past decade have kind of like reached giant status and, you know, we need something to come up from underneath almost like, you know, an odd future type shakeup, you know, to really yeah. kind of like bring everything that's been building over the past decade to its knees and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really just like kind of force everyone's hand into a direction because, you know, if, if we think about trap originally, like there were so many mainstream voices, even with the auto tune thing, like a lot of, you know, very loud public, I guess, like um, denunciation, like uh, the very negative reaction to Jay and Kanye embracing that sound on ham originally. But then people mm. warmed up to it. You know, Jay-Z coming out with the death of auto tune, but then auto tune ends up being the biggest fucking thing in the world. <laughs> um, that was the first death to mumble rap. Yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and all of these like, you know, calls, as you were just kind of saying, like death to mumble rap, um, uh, you know, but mumble rap continues. And, you know, I, I think like mumble rap is really just kind of like a dumb way of saying like we're not making hip hop just for its lyrical quality anymore. We're making it for its vibe and its aesthetic. Yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, because like, what the fuck is Nirvana if not like a mumble rock band? You know what I mean? And so many other yeah. bands of like that same era, or, like, you know, death metal bands and any number of like fucking rock outfits where you don't understand the fucking lyrics, uh, because you can't, you know, it's like by design you can't. So yeah. I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is like, you know, I, I think uh, uh, trap music's not obviously not going to last forever and not be popular forever. But I think hip hop has undergone a sea change where it's probably not going back. You know what I mean? People are making hip hop for its vibe and for its sound and purely like for its feeling. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of a Pandora's box that. Uh, is going to continue. I think now, you know, with the way the internet has kind of shifted everything, I think there's always going to be room for lyrical shit. And there's always going to be people out there who want it, who demand it, who make it. And again, like streaming platforms just make it easy uh, to where if you make that kind of music, you're going to be able to reach the audience for it. But, um, you know, I, I think uh, where that becomes the dominant thing, uh, it's, it's going to be tough to kind of foresee that being the case. Um, yeah. But again, you know, I, I feel like and, and this is not to sort of like put it on hip hop. I'm just saying like music and popular music in general, I think over the next two years is kind of like do and in need of, you know, another kind of like odd future type shakeup where you have like a younger generation just providing a different sound, a different ethos to kind of break up from all of these like very, very, very well established players that are, yeah. you know, going to kind of be just dominating the mainstream uninterrupted unless there is something else out there that's like kind of providing a different narrative um, i kind of think that the like up and coming uh hyper pop community is kind of like fulfilling that role in a, in a in a weird way not necessarily that it's all trap beats or whatever whatever but like mm. the, and then i feel like me even saying hyper pop it's such like a self-satirizing community that me that might even be a meme just me bringing that up on this interview mm. but like i don't know the the sort of ways that the, that that genre is like very difficult to pin down and like sort of interacting with people like you know so fago or and like people that are doing or, or eric doa that are doing uh more sort of you know, in, in integrating like trap beats and stuff like that, but also pushing it in a in like an experimental way and a sort of melodic way, and people don't really know what to, you know, put it into, and so they're just calling it like hyper pop or whatever. But I, I but I think it has an interesting energy, and uh, like a lot of the people that are making it are like you know young, like fifteen to 
18 years old and have a real, uh, um, you know, self-awareness and artistic ambition. And they encourage themselves to experiment and do a lot of, a lot of, you know, cool, strange shit. And I, I, I don't know, I've just been very uh, enamored by that scene and like sort of rooting for it, for it on the, on the sidelines, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, there's maybe definitely like an evolution of it. I don't know. No, there's definitely a lot of cool stuff coming out of that scene. And I've positively, you know, reviewed quite a bit of it. And I feel like, you know, honestly, um, I think, uh, you know, not to put like too much pressure, but, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, almost like the validity of the genre or the continuation of it, uh, is, is going to depend at least a little bit on like how much of a smash the next 100 Gex record ends up being. Um, mm. you know, we, we like, obviously that album and, and that duo is so incredibly influential to, you know, the whole thing. And as our artists like Charlie, but, um, you know, Charlie, uh, is, is one of the few acts out there as mainstream as she is, you know, sort of like making the waves that she is, you know, I think there would need to be almost like a, a wider flank of artists kind of like with their, you know, own different takes and sounds on the style hitting as hard as they are. If, you know, yeah. we are to see like, you know, um, any kind of like mainstream advancement, it could happen though. It could happen though. I'm just saying like, you know, these are kind of the, the steps that would need to happen. Yeah. Look out for, uh, uh, break ins, delete Zeke, uh, underscores, underscores, Midwest, mm -hmm. Alden, Quinn, Fraxium. Uh, yeah. Glaive, Eric DOA. Those are people that I think are, are really, uh, making some, some super cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, what everybody, you know, especially the younger people in my audience need to kind of like realize is like, I mean, I'm a millennial. Most of the people who are who I know who are millennials, like my friends, you know, like who I have known years of my life. Most most of them don't even like listen to a lot of music anymore. Or a lot of the music they listen to is like older music or just like artists that kind of indulge in sounds that they grew up with. You know what I mean? So it's like as far as like major musical contributions my generation is mostly like done at <laughs> at this point like I'm, I'm sure one of us will come out with a black star at some point you know so, some like incredible like amazing end of life opus that everybody has to like reckon with but um you know we're, there's we're, still room you still got i'll give him five five years you know i i i, I, th I think we're mostly done uh, i I, th yeah. I think it's like really on the zoomers now to do something refreshing to break the mold and you know as much as we uh uh, loved like the new Tyler record and even the new J Cole record. Like these guys are in their thirties now, you know, they're, they're no longer spring yeah. chickens. They're still putting out good stuff and they're putting out stuff that, you know, frankly, I find Tyler's work now to be way more artistic and thought provoking than it was when he was dropping shit, uh, with Goblin. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, is like, uh, you know, that, that fuck everything attitude can bring you eventually to a place where you're doing something very different and trying some wild shit and, you know, and breaking the mold. Like if you remember Tyler in those early years, he was very irreverent and like, you know, there are like old message board posts where people are like, you know, everyone's on Kanye's dick, his production's not that good, so on and so forth. And like, you know, obviously he softened a lot of his, a lot of his opinions over the years and, you know, has, has gained a lot more perspective. But like, you know, the fact that he was so willing to reject everything put, yeah. him, put him in a place where he was starting in unfamiliar territory that, you know, whether you liked it or not, you had to acknowledge that it was different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and, you know, and that's hyper pop as well, to a degree, you know, the hyper pop, whether you like it or not, you have to acknowledge that it's different. You have to acknowledge that it's trying something and you have to acknowledge that there's like a passionate audience for it that's moving in a different direction. And, um, <clears throat> you know, over the next couple of years, I, I hope we see whatever that's going to be for this decade. You know, I, I hope that rises up at, at some point. So, oh, yeah, uh, let me throw a few of these uh, fan questions at you. This kind of calls back to some of the discussions that we were having earlier. But if you could go into this like, you know, more uh, concretely, you were talking about how a lot of the mixes and instrumentals you were working on were coming off like really wintry. Yeah. And um, uh, Sympaditia uh, wants. Oh, to know, that's that's I, I reckon that's a Ditya. That's okay, my homie. Got it. Got it. Or I reckon I recognize them from, you know, the, the interwebs. Got it. Um, well, they're asking. Uh, uh, so when did the whole mountain, you know, wintry, like mountain theme come up for like the visuals and, and all of that, was that kind of born out of the way the album was sounding or was there kind of another thing that, uh, was coming into play lyrically and thematically that it was like, okay, I need to kind of go here and be here and present people with these kind of visuals. That's a good question. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I do this thing sometimes when I'm making a song, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sort of close my eyes and like I'll just envision the music video or like the place that it's sort of transporting me to like when I'm making it. And yeah, that so so that's just where in, in the very preliminary stages of the first few songs that I made or some of them that I maybe scrapped, like it just felt very grand and like mountainous, you know, like the big basses and the sort of breathy, windy uh, theremin sounds and shit like that. And so that that's sort of just how I saw the project. And then um, I just, you know, and I'm obviously I'm, it's not I'm not the first person to do a fucking mountain metaphor. Oh, mo a mountain is like a living a life. But it's like um, I thought that I could do it in an, in an interesting way. And I and I just became really I, I tried to like what, what's the word like uh, not, sort of become a method a method artist like I would you know a method project, a method rapper a method rapper uh, I would put fucking uh, like projections of you know ten ten hour uh, winter snowfall in a fucking ro pretty road like like I would just really like get into the zone on on some of them and I just sort of like embodied that thing of like you know I'm gonna be a fucking you know, mountaineer or whatever. And I think it just, just came, it just, and then I, I started listening to all these mountaineer interviews and, and, you know, some, I, I liked some, some of the lines and shit that they would say. And so I would just clip them out and like incorporate them at the end or beginning of songs where I feel like they sort of thematically connected with, you know, what was going on in the song. Like, for example, in the, like before work, mm -hmm. uh, the song work, um, there's a interlude there's sort of a mountaineer interview uh excerpt where it's where he's like you know i just it's just i'm addicted to the adrenaline and i need to keep going or so, i forget what he said but something like that and then that ties into the work one i don't know so i thought that that was a cool way to just take the sonics and then you know sort of allude to it in songs in a, in a few lines and bring it bring it together that's a yeah. surprisingly that's a surprisingly immersive process that you put yourself through uh, through for this. It reminds me of um, one of my favorite movies, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. How, how, never watched it. Never watched it. Well, uh, the, the, the movie centers around a book uh, written by a very insane man uh, named uh, Hunter S. Thompson. And yeah. uh, in preparation for the movie, Johnny Depp uh, shadowed him and just like spent time with him for a very long extended period of time. And, um, you know, there are all sorts of stories about... Uh, how nuts he is and there's um oh man i believe there's like an amazing uh i i have like a you know this this incredible like dvd version of the movie where um i believe hunter s thompson uh if i remember correctly does like you know director commentary on the whole movie and most of the most of the whole movie is an acid trip and uh you know, it's uh, pretty funny watching him sort of like or listening to him react to certain scenes like it wasn't like this at all. This is bullshit, you know, and just <laughs> like uh, the director, Terry Gilliams, is doing something fucking stupid here. None of this makes any sense. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I wanted to ask you a I question. Check it out. Yeah, please check it out. It's a great film. But yeah. uh, this next one comes from Tamal, who uh, wants to ask uh, uh, if you see yourself at this point as more of a rapper or producer. You know, and, and I guess to kind of jump off of that myself personally, given that you're kind of doing it, you know, both with your own work, um, you know, are there, are there moments where you have to kind of like force yourself out of the rapper headspace or the producer headspace in order to get something done or kind of focus in on something or accomplish something? Um, yeah, I don't know which one I really feel like more. I guess I, f I feel like more of a producer mm -hmm. just because that's what I spend the majority. I, I sort of feel like a producer and a songwriter. I guess if that is how I would put it, because, for example, like songs like uh, like Sisyphus, they're not they're not really like rap songs, even though there are verses that feature rapping. Mm. Like I, I think my the way I'm I'm viewing it now is is more so of like, how can I, how can I like approach this instrumental and like intertwine it lyrically or melodically in the in the best way, um, and that's definitely something that I sort of that I think I grew into as, as I was making the album. And it's fun to do, like, like I think that I'm, I'm like a capable rapper. Um, and so I am still down to do songs like, like that. And so if I, if I'm just in that headspace, like I, I, I will definitely like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to go spit some fucking bars. But um, I think that I'm more defaulting to like 
trying to pr create weirder shit with production just because I feel like that that has less of a ceiling on it for me and I and I think that a lot of the in like the the evolution and like innovation that I've made to my own music has been more produ production guided you know uh, and then and sort of like like you know creating cool bridges and stuff in the instrumentals and then uh using that in the way it makes me feel or whatever to like inform how I want to approach it lyrically. But I guess it's kind of a pretentious answer. That's sort of more of an afterthought. And when I was making what I've been making recently, it's, it was kind of not as well thought out as how I just explained it. Well, young Hades wants to know uh, if there are any <laughs> artists who you'd like to mention that you'd like to be working with, uh, you know, especially for your next project. That's a good question. I will literally work with so many people. Um, Oh, I forgot to, when I was giving my uh, my uh, hyper pop shout outs, I forgot to mention uh, Sebi, who is somebody oh, that I know you've, you've listened to. But I did a song. I actually did a song with him and another rapper named DC the Don. OK, um, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I, I, I would love to work with. Uh, I mean, Kanye is if I ever work with Kanye on anything, that's that's I automatically retire at the end of that. That's just the that's that's like, yeah, I think me and Tyler, the creator would make something really cool uh like slow tie uh 070 shake uh fucking um uh there's i don't know if there's some there's, I, I, so many people that i that i would like to work with that that's very that's a very hard question and i don't want to i don't want to jinx it i don't want to oh, yeah, jinx yeah. it no of course but maybe i maybe i should manifest it you know we yeah, we no, never I, I we always this, encourage we always encourage manifesting during these interviews. And I can tell you like at least one time there, there, there have been reach outs to, you know, between people on account of, on account of shouting out names during the interview. So it's a manifest away. Hell yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah, actually Kevin abstract is somebody that I was, that I, that I think I, I would make something really cool with, whether that be like a collab song or, or like production or collaborating on some, something, you know, uh, you know honestly, I, I think you could honestly just, you could you could just abduct Bareface and just take his place. I think I think I think like if you I think if you just like you know tied him up, locked him in a closet, and then just started wearing his clothes and just played it super low key. Like I don't think anybody would notice. Oh, this is who I want to mention: <laughs> Echo Two K. Yes, Echo Two K. That would be no, that would be you're, sick. You're very drained. You're you're very. The, drained. I'm extremely extremely drained. Um, which, which I which I think also plays into the <laughs> which I think also plays into the mountain and snow stuff as well. You know, I, yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah. I feel like being drained very much comes with like you know very chilly very chilly uh, temperatures and climates. That is that is a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's so many. Oh, Vince Staples would be could be cool. Okay. Um, Skepta is the goat. Yeah. I love, I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, UK fan. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. There's so many people that I think would be cool. That would be cool to work with. And, uh, any, anybody that I feel like is ambitious with or, and, and get, go, goes out of their comfort zone or whatever, I think, and, and like, I think that in some way, whether or not they would, they would want to work with me, I think that there could be something interesting or good, maybe. All right. Um, AS10 Live wants to know, uh, hi, I was in your top 0.0001% of your listeners on Spotify last year. So most hardcore fan. But, answer, yes. but answer honestly, do you think that you would be here without KSI? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, be here is such a vague Yeah. Would, thing. You, would you exist? I, like, would, I would, would you, not even would be alive. You, yeah. Would, would you um, be in this plane of existence? I think that uh, uh, the I'm not sure how how tapped in you are to the YouTube beef sector of the world. I, I've but, heard I've heard a little um, bit about the YouTube beef, but you know, yeah. just, just just answer the question the way yeah. that it, that it makes sense. All right, yeah. So so I did like a little diss track thing with KSI back in the day, uh, sort of like preceding voice memos as like a as like a convenient uh, album rollout uh, mm. coincidence. Mm. Um, and it, it was definitely like a big, it definitely propelled me to a new audience. And um, I don't know, it, 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 obviously I, I have a bigger following because of that. Like the, the diss track got millions and millions of views, but I think I also capitalized on it very well by like 
releasing songs that then performed well on their own on their own right like for example on my spotify there's no ksi diss track on it you know and there's still songs with millions of streams and stuff like that but obvi- but but obviously it, it 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 sort of put me in in the spotlight but it's it's i feel like it would be hard to sustain that from like that and then releasing this album like there's there's many steps in between that um i think that i'll i'll say that i had the agency in but uh yeah and i and i was already like you know had i, I don't know like 800,000 subscribers on youtube or whatever like I, I was i was doing my i was doing my thing but youtube beef always you know that always can be propelling you know no it it tends to do that yeah you have you gotten a lot of i know some rappers have been have called you out but have you ever gotten like a youtube beef with, a, I, ra- with I, a rapper or with a with, with any yeah, yeah what what's what's the beef that lives in that lives in your head the most um i i had a beef with a, a crazy uk right-wing youtuber at one point which i'm sure you're aware of um that happened that was probably my my most profoundly large youtube beef which i i never got a response to the video even though i was told i I would get a response to the video so it's just kind of devolved into into cowardice since then um but i i really haven't like you know sort of like tried to outwardly beef like long term with any singular musician or anything i i think like the closest i ever got to doing that was was when anderson anderson pack claimed that he had the best teeth best teeth in the game and I, I had, I, res- close, I responded, close, I responded, I responded and, yeah. uh, you know, it happened, but it, it, it was all just kind of fun and games at, at the end of the day. You know, I, I feel like with, with Anderson, it's all just, it's all talk until we get our teeth into the same room, you know, until, until the teeth <laughs> no, are into sorry. the same. What is it? Sorry. I've been, I've been kind of cutting you off on in this interview a couple of times. I apologize. I apologize. Oh, I was I was just gonna say it's 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 all talk until it's all it's all talk until our teeth are all in the same room and you know until our teeth are in the same room, you know it's it's not a it's it's not worth pursuing it's not worth continuing you know if 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 I have an exchange with him now or at any point like it better be over getting the teeth in the same room you know I don't want to talk about anything else you know that'd be but, legendary but until until that happens I'm just moving on to other things you know but but you know I I feel like he's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. And, and if we continue on our paths, our teeth will probably naturally intersect at some point, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just waiting for my time. I'm, I'm brushing. I hope you're brushing every day, Anderson. I hope you're brushing <laughs> it. I'm brushing, I'm flossing and I'm using mouthwash every day. Cause I'm, I'm going to be ready. I'm not planning the day. I'm not like preparing, like I'm a boxer or anything like that, because I think when our teeth do intersect, it's going to be serendipitous and I'm just going to be ready by sheer, just regular everyday maintenance. So, you know, that's, 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 that's all I got to say. And what, how, how would that like go when you're in the same room? Break it, break a camera out, big, big fat on both sides. And we just got to. We we just we just got to go on both you know show show the backs show the fronts just really uh, 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 you know just just and put the and put the teeth side by side the teeth have to go side by side yeah and just like r- just way up way up into the camera lens no hiding no nothing I'm excited for this it's gonna happen now you put it out into the world there's no way it doesn't <laughs> it's it's gonna um, happen eventually it's gonna happen at some point I I, I, yeah. I, won't, I won't force it you know it's like well I'll probably see him on the street. You know, just one day I'll be like, hey, I'm not going to be shy about it. Hey, let me see those teeth. Let me see those That's teeth. Good. And, and if and if and if he's if he's a man of his word, if he's a man of his claims, he'll, he'll come over. He'll come over. He'll say hi. Damn right. And we'll, and we'll have a little teeth off. If he runs that, then that's a different then that's a different story. I don't think he'd run, though. He, he seems no. like, he seems like a guy who means what he says. And he and he, yeah. from what I see, he has good teeth. If I had those teeth, I wouldn't run. I, mm. I, I wouldn't run from anything. A formidable opponent. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't run. Hell yeah. Um, when you were talking when before before we got into this very uh, in- interesting teeth discussion. Yeah. Uh, you were saying we were sort of talking about beef and if you've gotten into 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 beefs beefs with rappers and I and I feel like these days, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like pe- like artists in general 
you have been you've been growing on them. Like I, I think I see less people getting mad at you because I because I think you, you over the years you've had to sort of fight or or you know not necessarily fight but just continue to work and do and do your shit and to be really respected and like legitimized by a lot of like uh, musicians that may have called you out in the past. Do you feel that that is true that they're sort of warming up to you more and and why why is that the case if you think that it is i i don't i mean uh i don't know if i've become more likable as of late i think uh people have just kind of seen that i've i've, I've been doing it for literally a fucking decade you know what yeah. i mean like what, what what the fuck is gonna stop me at this point other than me just deciding i'm done you know there, there's no amount of tweeting or instagram living or uh, article writing or whatevering that's like just going to make me not wake the fuck up tomorrow and just be like, all right, well, let's let's get this Lucy Dacus interview out. Let's do it. You know, it's like I, I, I went through tons of bullshit today and I didn't even let me stop that from, uh, you know, stop me from doing this interview. So, you know, uh, uh, what, uh, I, uh, if anybody has anything to say. In terms of like, you know, trying to stop me, uh, short of killing me. <laughs> not, don't don't put that out there. Knock on wood. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm knocking on wood too. Like, it, you know, uh, what 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 is anybody going to do to to literally stop me short of that? You know. Yeah. And and I and I think as as of this point, after doing what I've been doing for years, um, I think most people have come to realize like, I'm not in agent of chaos. I'm not here to bully anybody. I'm not here to ruin anyone's career or life or whatever. I'm just saying my opinion. I know that a lot of people pay attention to it, but I, I don't ask for people to take it as seriously as they do. I would love for people to just kind of see it and be like, okay, you know, that's a perspective. Here's my perspective. And then just sort of like, you know, say their own piece or, you know, start their own YouTube channel or whatever. You know, it's like I, this, this, you know, the, the, the delivery of much of what I do is very simple because, uh, you know, I'm just showing you how easy it could be if you want to do it yourself. Um, yeah. but, uh, you know, I, I just kind of want to be a part of the conversation which whether I'm here or whether I'm not is going to be ongoing. And uh, I'm just inserting my own thoughts into that conversation. You're obviously free at all times to put in your thoughts and totally ignore mine if you want. You don't got to fucking pay attention to anything that I say. Um, you know, I, I think that I only have as much influence as, you know, you as an individual, you generally, not you personally, uh, you know, as I only have as much influence as you allow me to have. You know, if, mm. if, if, if I'm in your head, you know, and you're wondering, oh, what's Anthony going to think about this? Blah, blah, blah. Like that's that's your choice to think about me. You're thinking about me. Uh, there are people who I don't like and I don't think about them because I don't like them. And thinking about them upsets me or just like ruins my day. And if that's what I am to you, don't think about me. Think about something else. Think about another thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a good answer. So uh, this this has been a great interview of me. Thank you for coming through and conducting it. I appreciate it uh, greatly. Of course, of course. I'm I'm, I'm curious about you oh. because I feel like you are a a unique and important person in music and in the way that people talk about music. You know, I, I genuinely think that that's the case. Like the amount of time times before you were even di involved directly in my life as an as an artist that you know i've had discussions about about your your review or or something you said or whatever is it's happened many many times and so i don't and so i'm not trying to put pressure undue pressure on you you probably already have, have enough enough of that but you you know keep doing keep doing what you're doing and i think that it's it's good i think thank you i will i will always remember the day that you shouted me out here <laughs> and I, I won't forget it. I'm hoping that I can get to your level one day. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you for the encouragement. I will continue doing what I'm doing, <laughs> and I will I will strive to uh, uh, reach your your your. What is my peak. level? What, what is my level? You're you're on top of the mountain, man. You're on the. Uh, you, you did a whole album about being on the mountain. I'm just I'm just at the. It was a, a facade, Anthony. It was a facade. <laughs> the music video wasn't real. I was on it the looked, top of the mountain for a very brief period. Now I'm now I'm like a, oh, got it. a normal peasant once again. Got it. Okay. All right. This yeah. is, you're not you're not uh doing this interview live from the mountain right now? 
Unfortunately, not. That's I'd feel this is just false advertising. Yeah. I I I'm changing I'm changing the five to a four. Oh it's, no! I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I was I only gave it a five because I thought the mountain was real, but now we've learned the mountain oh, was shit. just a lie. Or maybe that makes it a six. Maybe that makes it almost like an M Night Shyamalan kind of ending. Cause, no, it's because I got you. It's because I, I manipulated you that it's a six. There, I think there was no mountain to begin with, and I'm I'm yeah. I'm the fool. I'm the fool. You know, Anthony, as, as I say in the song, we all have a mountain of our own. And so mm-hmm. you, I've, I've given you the, the illusion that you have a mountain that doesn't actually exist. And so therefore, I think I you're, you're kind of underrating me here. It's, they, they, they don't they don't see it yet. They don't see it. I'll give them a couple of years. Then they'll, they'll look back on it. They'll say, damn, he was he was doing something through your music. You put me on my own mountain. That sounds like a like the ending of a Twilight Zone episode. Yes. Well. Quedeca, this has been a great conversation. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I had a good, I had a good time. Thank you for coming through. I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad you had a good time. And uh, uh, let us know when the next record is coming out. Uh, I know because you've mastered so many things with this last record, it's going to come out sooner rather than later. It's so. good. It's me and Tom, Tommy Mac. We've done a full uh, oh. anti-vaccine project. It's, a, it's, it's going to be good. Let me know if I can get a, Let me know if I can get a verse on that. You know, okay. I, 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 have a a, bass, I have a, I have a, a lot bass to, solo too. I have a lot to say. Yeah, bass solo. I have a lot to say no. about about vaccines. You know, and the mm-hmm. and the, da- the danger of them, the danger of vaccines. You know, I'll I'll do a bass solo in I'll do a two note bass solo in binary code oh, that shit. will be my entire vaccine manifesto, and people will have to you know uh, transcribe it to understand what I'm saying. But it'll it'll be really good. It'll be great. Write that down. Keep it in the vault. Mm. Yes, it's in the vault. It's it's in the vault. I've good. Saved it. Good. <laughs> All right. Sorry for um for rambling and and asking you too many questions. We may have drawn it out too far, but I think it was a good valuable time. And I thank you. I agree. It was a good valuable time. And and yeah. Listen. Uh. Uh. Have a good night. And if you ever find yourself returning to the mountain, let us know. Sounds good. Sounds good.